In a previous video, I spoke about how height and body mass can impact sprinting speed while focusing on male athletes. In this video, we'll explore how these factors carry over to female sprinters to see if the same principles apply. In the women's 100 meters, there's a significant variance in the heights of the women who have reached the most elite standard of running sub 11 seconds. The most notable athlete on the short end of the height spectrum is a woman who's run under 11 seconds the most times by far, and that is Shelly Ann Fraser Price, who stands at 5 foot tall. To date, she's run under 11 seconds 82 times, with a personal best of 10.60, making her the third fastest woman in history, and she has also won the most major championship gold medals in the women's 100 meters. Fraser Price is known for her incredibly explosive start and fast turnover completing her personal best race in 50 strides with a frequency of 4.72 strides per second. In the case of Fraser Price, her short stature has worked as a benefit since her explosiveness out of the blocks often allows her to create a massive gap on the rest of the field. She has had some races in her career where she appeared to tighten up towards the end of the race which negatively impacted her speed maintenance, but in recent years she has worked to eliminate this flaw from her race pattern and maintain relaxed form through the line. Another athlete who stands up 5 foot tall is the current world champion, Shikari Richardson. Richardson differs from Fraser Price since she isn't as quick out of the blocks as the Jamaican. However, her acceleration builds more gradually and her finishing speed is among the best in the world. Richardson has been known to occasionally have a poor start, leaving her with a deficit to make up. But when she gets into upright running, her form can be close to flawless as she transfers her force directly down through her centre of mass and maintains a very straight posture as her foot hits the ground. Another elite female sprinter who's on the shorter side, standing at 5 foot 2 and a half inches, is Marie Jose Talou. Talou has a personal best of 10.72, and during this race she took 50.5 strides to cover 100 meters at a rate of 4.71 strides per second. Richardson also covered 100 meters in 50.5 strides during her 10.65 performance as she won the World Champs final in 2023. Moving into the average height range for women, we have Carmelita Jeter, who's a retired American sprinter who stands at 5 foot 4 inches tall. Something noteworthy about Jeter was that she had a particularly muscular physique for a female athlete, which could be emphasized by her strict and powerful looking running form. Following the pattern of the athletes mentioned so far, she covered 100 meters in 50 strides during her 10.64 PB race. Evelyn Ashford was also an average height sprinter of 5 foot 5, but in contrast to Jeter, she had an exceptionally thin physique with a small frame, which can give the impression that she was shorter than 5 foot 5. Her upper body was particularly small, but like most cases of female sprinters with light upper bodies, they still have a well-developed lower body as a consequence of possessing so much speed. Ashford was a 100 meter world record holder, first breaking the world record with a time of 10.79 in 1983, which she lowered to 10.76 the following year. This record would stand for four years. At the upper end of the average height range, we have the second fastest woman of all time, Elaine Thompson Hera, who's five foot six inches tall. Thompson has a personal best of 10.54, and is known for her exceptional speed maintenance and has unofficial 60 slash 40 meter splits of 6.87 and 3.87. The fastest woman of all time, Florence Griffith Joyner, is just an inch taller than Thompson at 5 foot 7 and shares a similar race pattern with the same first 60 meter split of 6.87 but a faster final 40 meters of 3.62 in her 10.49 world record run. With both athletes sharing similarities in height, leanness and race pattern execution, you could make the case that they are in the sweet spot in terms of the physicality required to reach the pinnacle of the women's 100m. But you could also argue that they both discovered the ideal technique to reach and maintain their top speed for longer and they just happen to be built physically similar. These two athletes are the first on our list where the personal best race was completed in under 50 strides with Thompson finishing her race in 49.5 strides and Flojo finishing hers in 47.5. With both athletes having exceptional finishing speed in the 100, they also both rank in the top 3 all time in the 200 meters, with Flojo holding the world record of 21.34 and Thompson being the third fastest woman ever in the event with 21.54. 
The woman in second place all time with a PB of 21.41 is Sharika Jackson who stands at 5 foot 8 inches tall and also has a 100 meter PB of 10.65 running 47.5 strides. Interestingly, when looking at the top 12 fastest women of all time in the 200 meters, they're all 5 foot 6 and above, so it would seem that being above average height serves as an advantage in the 200 meters at the highest level. Jackson has been making rapid improvements in the 100 meters since she switched her focus over from the 400 meters in 2021, and she has the potential to break Flojo's 200 meter world record that has stood for 35 years. Another 5 foot 8 athlete is Irina Privalova, who despite her tall height still holds the women's 60 meter world record of 6.92 which she set in 1993. Her fastest 100 meter time ever of 10.77 is evidence that she's leagues away from Flojo in terms of final 40 meter speed, but she was at one point the third fastest woman ever in the 100 meters which deserves recognition. The variance in height of female sprinters who are strong versus weak starters does go to show that height doesn't play a major role in starting potential. Moving into the range of exceptionally tall female sprinters, we have Marion Jones who is 5 foot 10 and had a 100 meter personal best of 10.65, running 47.5 strides. When Jones was in her prime, there was a major gulf in class between her and the rest of her competitors, and the margin she won by in the 2000 Olympic final is evidence of this. She currently stands as the 5th fastest athlete ever in the 200 meters, with a personal best of 21.62. Just behind her on the all time list with a 200 meter PB of 21.63 is Daphne Shippers who is listed at 5 foot 10.5. When Shippers had the best year of her career in 2015, she set PBs in both the 100 and 200 meter finals of the world champs, taking silver in the 100 and gold in the 200. In both events she was finishing very strongly and managed to make up the deficit on Elaine Thompson in the 200 and pass her before the line, but in the 100 she couldn't catch Fraser Price despite an impressive effort where she finished in 10.81. She covered this race in 47 strides. With an official PB of 10.79 we have Blessing Okukbare who is listed as 5 foot 11 but she has also ran a time of 10.62, which was later rescinded over PED use. Okukbare could be considered as one of the best examples of a female sprinter who had a particularly strong finish relative to the rest of her race, with Daphne Shippers also having a similar race pattern at times. Okukbare ran her PB race in just 46 strides. From my research, the tallest woman to run the 100 meters in under 11 seconds is Shauna Miller Weibo, who is 6 foot 1 and has a personal best of 10.98, although she has only run one similarly fast time in her career, as her main focus has been on the 400 and 200 meters, in which she has a PB of 21.74. She has run her personal best race in the least strides of any woman on this list by completing hers in 45.5 strides. Coming from the Bahamas, she has a similar tall and slim build to her countryman Stephen Gardner, who also holds the 400 meters as his best event and runs with a similar graceful running style. In my video looking at the importance of height when it came to male sprinters, I concluded that being above average height did correlate with winning major gold medals in the 100 meters, particularly Olympic gold over the last 20 years, but being average height didn't serve as a disadvantage. Shorter sprinters at the highest level were more rare but still present. When it comes to female sprinters however, there doesn't appear to be any clear correlation in terms of particular height serving as an advantage with women of varying heights from 5 foot to 5 foot 10 recording personal bests under 10.7 seconds. In the 200 meters, being above average height does appear to serve as an advantage with the top 12 fastest women ever all being 5 foot 6 and above as I've mentioned earlier in this video. It's possible that shorter sprinters having to expend additional energy on taking extra strides is disproportionately more taxing once the sprint distance is doubled. In the 100 we've seen a difference in strides per 100 meters based on height with women of average height and below that we looked at usually covering 100 meters in 50 to 51 strides but women above average height covered the distance in less than 50 strides, with the number of strides typically decreasing at each extra height increment. It is worth noting however that speed isn't directly dependent on stride length and stride frequency, but they are simply measurements of the athlete's performance. Something that can vary far more drastically between athletes than stride number is their hip flexion to hip extension ratio, 
with hip extension relating to backside mechanics and hip flexion relating to frontside mechanics. In the 2017 World Champs Final of the women's 100m, Talu's flexion to extension ratio was particularly high at 3.58, while Tori Boy, who beat her at the line, had the lowest ratio on the field of 1.79, meaning her leg cycle was particularly backside dominant. Talu also had the shortest ground contact times relative to air time in the field, which is represented as a drive index of 0.72 while Bowie had the second highest drive index in the field with 0.83, showing the contrast in technique of athletes who finished within one hundredth of a second of each other. In Tori Bowie's personal best race, she ran a time of 10.78 and completed the race in just 46 strides, which is a particularly low stride number even at her height of 5 foot 9. If you'd like to see more videos on these sprinting topics, please subscribe and thanks for watching.